Hi, I'm Paul Marcel. Today I'd like to review a third-party accessory called the Diamond Plate that works with your domino joiner. Now the Diamond Plate accessory is made by a fellow FOG member, Ron Wenner, and it's a pretty simple plate. Now the Diamond Plate finds its utility if you're building a number of cases, like if you're building the bottoms of kitchen cabinets or even the uppers, things like that, where you're building the cases out of sheet goods, then what this provides is it provides a nice offset fence for you to place the mortise for the thickness. So it's a, a little bit it's very similar in effect, and I'll show you how this all works together, but it's very similar in effect to using this fence and adjusting its height, except that it only has two heights and thicknesses available, one for centering on nominal half-inch sheet goods and one for centering on nominal three-quarter inch sheet goods. So now you're wondering, well, where does this go when you've got that other fence? It's easy. What happens with this is that very much so like the base support, that you can get for the domino fence, the one that comes with your domino, right? There's this piece that attaches to the bottom of your fence and it's used for giving you additional support when you're mortising with a domino vertical. This attaches in the same way to the base of the domino. So on the base of the domino you have these two M5 screws that you're then going to place this base here, either this way here for three-quarter nominal or this way here for half-inch nominal and then you would use the domino upside down. This becomes your fence the same as this one. Now you might ask, well, why would you want to use that in place of the regular fence? Well, it's much more sturdy. You're not going to have to worry about this drifting. Now if you were cranking through, say, 15 bases that are for a kitchen cabinet series build that you're doing, you can certainly get, you know, after that many mortises, you're probably going to have some drift on your fence, and that could cause problems with your assembly. Now, of course, if you check this routinely to make sure that it's still calibrated fine, well, then you're not going to have any issues. But a plate like this, especially in a production shop, is going to save you a lot of hassle of having to worry about it because there's just no way that this thing can change. So with that in mind, the Domic plate is actually has its utility mostly in a cabinet shop type environment, although it can be very useful for you if you happen to be doing a number of cabinets yourself or if you're doing some on the side. So let me bring you in a little closer so that I can show you how it attaches and the different things that you have to do with the Domic plate when you receive it. And after that, I'll show you a couple quick demos. Now when you receive the Domit plate from Ron Wenner, you're just going to get the plate itself. It's already been threaded and milled, but you need to attach a handle to the front, and we'll see how to do that in a moment, and you're going to need some cap head screws in order to attach it to the base of the domino. So the screws that you're going to need to get are very similar to the ones that already come on the base support, that little piece that came with your domino. So if we were to remove this really quickly. Now these are the nice thumb knobs on them. You might actually consider buying an extra set of these or even just another base support and then remove the screws in order to use them. Or you can simply go to the big box store like I did and pick up some cap head screws. So I picked up, the, here are some longer cap head screws. I did find that those were way too long. They take too long to install so I got some shorter cap head screws. So these are some M5 screws. These ones here happen to be 12 millimeters, so about a half inch. And they work just fine for attaching the base now in this case here, I'm going to have to use a hex wrench in order to tighten this up securely, which is why these screws might be a little bit more convenient for you if you happen to do this pretty often. And just as a point to consider, these screws, though they look like they're completely captured, it's because they just have a little rubber o-ring on them. So you could actually pull this down a little ways, and you can see that there's the o-ring. So roll the o-ring right off. Now you could use this on your diamond plate. And obviously it's very easy to exchange between the two, depending on how often you use the base guide. So those are your options. You can go ahead and use the thumb screws that come with the base support, or you can go ahead and just pick up a an M5 metric cap head screw that's about 12 millimeters long, and that'll be just plenty long enough in order to secure this. So now with the base attached, I can show you how to use it. We're not going to be using the regular fence that's on here. What we're going to do is we're actually going to place the domino upside down for doing the mortises. Now, the offset of the domino plate from the stock to where the mortise is, this, is, this one here is going to center a piece of half-inch nominal sheet good for the, for the mortise, and this side here would do three-quarter. So in that case here, you take the plate off, flip it, and put it back on. Now typically if you're making cabinet bases, you're going to be doing it all with half inch stock or some three quarter inch stock, or at least you can do your layout and your job flow in such a way that you could do all the three quarter thick sheets at the same time and then all the half inch sheets at the same time to minimize the amount of times that you have to remove this. So in looking at this, you're thinking, but that's awfully awkward to hold this in place, which is why you're going to want a little handle here. 
Now what Ron did is he pre-taps this with an M8 threading so that you can use the Festool hand knob that comes with your clamping elements. Now I don't know about you, but ever since I got my clamping elements, these have sat in a drawer. I never ever reach underneath the MFT table to screw these on. And certainly, even if you do, these aren't in use when these aren't in use. So you can always take this, and now you can just screw this right up onto the front. And this is going to give you a great handle for doing the mortises. But this is actually going to work as is when you first use this handle. The reason being is that the screw will actually go through the entire plate. So what we need to do is a couple different things. One of the options is if you're the type that really likes a grinder and you know flames of, and sparks going all over the place while you grind this thing down, well of course you could grind down the little tip of this screw. Personally, I'm not the type to do that because I'm horrible at it. So one other option is I just took a look in my scrap bin of screws and washers and I found I have you know, one metal washer that I can put on here and then have a neoprene washer, which is perfect because as it goes on, it kind of stays on kind of tightly. Just like these O-rings were holding that screw in place on the base support, well, this little neoprene washer is actually going to hold that washer there in place. So I can now put this on here, and that's going to take up enough slack to make it that it doesn't go all the way through. But of course, it's really easy to put on and off, and I could easily take this off if I need to use it with the clamping elements. So it doesn't go all the way through now but I have a really good support. Now there is yet another way that you can correct this, this handle in order to use it with the Dama plate. The other way to use it is to simply change out the screw that's in here into one that's a little bit shorter. So I went to the big box store and I got you know, an M8 12 millimeter bolt that we're gonna place in here to make it a little bit shorter. And the way that you replace that, and it's actually kind of ingenious on here. There's a little tab, stick a thin screwdriver in there, give it a twist, and see this part here holds a hex headed screw or bolt inside. All you're going to do is just drop that inside here, put this back together, and squeeze it. Now we've got a shorter nub on there. So either one of these methods will easily work for getting this handle to be functional on the front of this without going all the way through. So just make sure that you get one. Now if you end up swapping a screw like that, then just make sure you somehow mark this so that you don't end up using the other one not realizing that you had this little nub and then it's going to put the dominant plate at a small angle and that could cause you some grief. So this is how you use the dominant plate when you want to play some mortise. Now the way you use the dominant plate, I have this currently set to the side that's going to give me centering on half inch thick stock. And this is my, my half inch thick, this happens to be wafer board, but of course it works with nominal half inch ply, is you would just place this upside down and then you're going to line up to any of the lines that you've made for marking your mortises. And you're going to be able to see that here. The base of the domino fence has a marking that's actually accurately calibrated at the factory to the center of your mortise. So unlike a recent video I did where I showed you how to calibrate the cursor up here, the plastic cursor, this bottom one here is actually pre-calibrated at the factory. So you don't have to do anything special for that one. So you'll be able to just place this down here, line up that line with the line that you see on your stock and then you would just be able to plunge and make your mortises and you could go across. Now this is very very rigid so I could see how if you were doing this for a large cabinet job where you had say 15 bases in each one of those side panels and joints, four of which are on there or six if you're doing the whole cube, if they had four a piece there's an awful lot of mortises. It'd be nice to be able to have this and not worry about the fence doing any drifting. We've got those lined up, just place this thing down and you can be pretty rough about it because that plate's not going anywhere. And then you can just line up that hole, just line up the underlying line there. So you can see how the mortises are automatically centered on the thickness. Now I didn't have to do anything with the normal thickness setting down here. In fact, it's sitting at 20, so it's, it's considerably off. This fence is considerably off for the thickness of the stock, but that's because this dictates the thickness that you're centering to. Now, if you're thinking that this is only going to work on half inch thick stock or three quarter inch thick stock, I mean, remember, those are all very nominal sizes. If you were using regular ply, like solid core ply, those are typically a little bit smaller and they're always varying. So you're still going to have to respect the reference surfaces that you're using when you're putting things together. You can't just plow them on one side or the other side and just hope that they're dead center. You're going to need to still respect the sides, but this gets you closer to the middle, which is ultimately the better place for you to do your glue up. 
So with the intention of connecting this like this, I'll be mortising from the top, but I'm going to be using the half inch thickness reference because that's the one I used here so that I get the correct distance from this surface down to where that set of mortises is going to go. So for doing these mortises, we're just going to place it straight down so you actually have a pretty good reference surface for keeping that flat. You have the whole original fence. But now when we scoot this up, all we're going to do is we're going to line up the center line to the line that you drew here. And plow the mortises. There we go. Nice and flush. So I hope you can see the utility of the Dama plate if you're doing a number of sheet good boxes, if you're say lining your whole garage with, with cases that you're building out of primarily sheet goods, or if you're making things like lockers, like I've made a lot of hockey lockers for some of my friends, uh, it would be very useful for something like that because it's all sheet good based with melamine sheets in that case. Or if you're doing, say, kitchen remodel where you're rebuilding 15 bases and 15 suspended boxes, it would be really nice just because you can pretty much set it to the nominal size of the sheet good that you're using for your project and just crank through it because this is a really solid handle. Now, you can still use the regular handle. There's no reason why you couldn't just use that in place of the Dama plate. The one benefit that the Dama plate has is, of course, it's rigid. It's not going to be changing over time. You're not going to have to recalibrate it if you've moved this at all. Uh, pretty much, you know, even if this doesn't exactly center it on a, on a half inch thick piece of wafer board or something, it doesn't matter. You still have to respect the reference points. But the point is, is that, you know, two months from now, you could go to build another, another box and you could join it to some of the old boards that you had already mortised. I mean, you're not going to be really doing that, but the point is, it's very repeatable. And that's actually a huge benefit when you're trying to do joinery. So I did just want to review really briefly what you're going to need to add to your base again because I gave you a bunch of different options. I don't want you to think that there's a bunch of things you need to go buy or certain parts you need. You've pretty much got them all most likely in your shop right now. And that is for the plate, you're just going to get the plate. Then after that, take these two screws off of the base support that comes with your domino. Now for the handle, the handle, all it is, is it's a part that comes with your clamping elements. Most of us have clamping elements and most of us looked at these handles and we thought, oh that's nice and we used it on the first clamping thing and then we realized, well the clamping element doesn't pop out of the table anyway, so we put these away in a drawer. The question for you is which drawer? So all you need to do is either put a pair of washers on there to act as a spacer if you just want to get going and using it right away, or just go to the store and pick up a 12 millimeter long uh, M8 screw uh, and then just swap it out of the one that handle that you have.